Good morning and welcome to our online service today. We are glad that you are here with us. This morning, we are going to have a time of worship, and following that, we are going to be hearing the second part of our mini-series, By a Spirit, from Pastor Darrell. Let's prepare ourselves to hear from God's Word as we worship today. Kids, Pastor Susan has prepared a sermon activity for today, so please head on to our church website, to our online page, and click on the Kids Sermon Activity button down below for your activity. Before we head into worship, let's pray. Dear Lord Heavenly Father, as we head into worship, I pray that we can all be in your presence. I pray that you will move through our homes and open our hearts to hear what you have to say. I pray that as Pastor Darrell speaks this message by his spirit, we will be in your spirit and take away whatever you have for us. I pray all of this in your name. Amen. Let's worship the Lord together. Thank you. 
all of my devotion. Now there's nothing in this world that could ever satisfy. Through every trial, my soul will sing. No turning back. I've been set free in Christ. Is enough for me? Christ is enough for me. Everything I need. Everything I need Christ my all in all The joy of my salvation And this hope will never fail and Heaven is our home the glory and Christ is enough for me oh Christ is enough for me everything I need is in you everything I need Christ is enough for me Christ is 
Good morning, APC. It's great to be together once again. We wanted to take a few minutes to fill you in on what's happening in and around our church before we hear our second part of By His Spirit from Pastor Daryl. So attention kids, we are excited to be offering you your very own Backyard VBS, that's right. Coming up in July, we'll be helping you host your own VBS in your very own yard. Here's what you can expect. Instead of bringing your kids to VBS, Let's bring VBS to your kids. Together, we're taking a tubular trip through the early church. Bible stories, games, origami crafts, powerful teaching, great music. <laughs> Dude, you don't want to miss this. It is time to bring back the neon t-shirts Big hair, kind of like mine, and uh, leg warmers, even though it would be extremely hot and uncomfortable. Details will be coming as we get closer to the summer, so stay tuned for that. And don't forget that Zoom prayer meeting is this Wednesday at 7 p.m. The link to join will be in your weekly email, or you can always email the office through our website, apcallison.church. We'll be happy to get you connected. And Impact students, this Friday is overflow. Don't panic. Even though we're not able to meet in person for this annual event, join us online on Friday night at 6.45 p.m. To participate online, you'll need the link, so please get in touch with Pastor Joshua at pjoshua at apcallison.org. That's his email address for those details and any questions you may have. Now, let's hear from Pastor Daryl. Well, thank you for joining us online today. Today, we continue and conclude our mini-series, By His Spirit, by talking about the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Today, being Pentecost Sunday, it's a day we celebrate and commemorate the initial outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon the believer in Christ back in Acts chapter 1, Acts chapter 2. This would be the fulfilled promise that Jesus gave to his disciples prior to him leaving. Last Sunday, we talked about that promise of the Holy Spirit, where Jesus announced his departure and that he would send to us the Comforter, the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, so that we could be reminded of his words to us, receive power in order for the church to go forward. It's what John 14, 26 tells us, but the counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. It will be by his spirit that we will have the supernatural, super spiritual, if you will, ability, the words of Jesus and the opportunity to make a substantial and significant difference within people's lives as we together proclaim the gospel message. In other words, we need the Holy Spirit power to enable us to do the work of the kingdom. Back a few weeks ago, I had purchased 145 8 by 8 patio pavers on Facebook Marketplace, $50 by the way, uh, for a little job that I have still yet to do. Uh, can't afford to build the deck this year as lumber prices are out of control, another hemisphere. So we opted to put a little uh, patio out back by the shed that we recently installed. Well, 
Considering the weight of the stones and what my truck could handle and wanting to easily be able to access the stones once I brought them home, I thought to be on the safe side uh, that I would rent a 7x14 heavy duty double axle trailer from Simco Trailer right here in Alliston. Great people to work with by the way. So Kathy and I knew we had a bit of a drive to retrieve the stones. So this would give me what I needed and then some. So we picked up the trailer and uh, off to our destination in Bolton and, and loaded up the patio pavers and, 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 and we made our way back. Simple, right? Well, it was simple. Let me just say this. With that trailer in tow, the 145 patio pavers, I didn't even know I was pulling all that weight. I mean, that trailer was the peanut butter to my jam. Come on, smooth and effortless, woo, come on. So what's the point of the story? Well, this is exactly what the Holy Spirit can do within each of our lives. He gives us the power, the extra strength, and the ability, and then some that we need to get the job done. Can someone say amen to that? Now, I still have to finish the patio out back, but hopefully over the next few weeks, I will get that done. But the trailer did its part extremely well. Not that I am comparing the Holy Spirit to a utility trailer. God, by His Spirit, functions in a similar capacity by giving us power to fulfill kingdom mission, something we will struggle with on our own. In fact, we won't be able to do it without the power of the Holy Spirit. So let's read our text from Acts chapter 1, verse 8, and Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. Here's what it says, Acts 1, 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Acts 2, 1 to 4. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Powerful text. Lots of, of, of detail in this, these first few chapters of Acts. I would challenge you just to read them on your own time. So Jesus leaves his disciples with a promise that the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, the Counselor is coming. But not just coming as one person or one body, but coming as an everywhere present power of God to indwell those who follow Christ. The Holy Spirit, God himself coming to take up residence within you and me, providing powerful change within us so we can declare his message. The promise is reiterated to the disciples again in Acts chapter 1 verse 4, and this time Jesus tells them not to leave Jerusalem until the promise has been fulfilled. Now, the disciples over the course of the three years with Jesus, they never fully grasped all that he was talking about until later, after he was gone, in fact. And in verse 6, this is after the death and the resurrection of Christ and, and having multiple conversations with Jesus, the disciples ask Jesus this question, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? They still did not fully understand the bigger picture. They did not understand that God has a bigger plan. And can I just say today that God's plan still exists today. It's bigger than whatever it is we are facing in this world. You see, no person, no man, no government, no earthly power, and certainly no disease will be able to disrupt or hinder God's plan as he unfolds it. Now, Jesus simply brings them around to what is most important for their present context moment. 
receiving the power to proclaim the gospel message. Jesus knew what was coming. Jesus knew what they were going to need in order to fulfill their mission. And that still exists today, by the way. There's no difference between them and us. We still need what Jesus has to offer. Jesus tells them that dates and times are not for them to know. And then he jumps right into the essence of the Holy Spirit's coming upon them, which, which is in Acts 1.8. Now, Acts 1.8 specifically talks about three things. It talks about one, receive power. Two, the Holy Spirit's revival. This is the promise fulfilled. And number three, being Christ's witness. This is something that is often missed, overlooked, overlooked, perhaps uh, forgotten about as we journey through the ebbs and flows of serving Jesus in an uncertain world. We tend to overlook our mission and our purpose. In fact, I believe it is the, it's, it's at the very core of our relationship with Christ, and that is being His witness, telling others about Jesus with love as a foundation, by the way, telling others that there is a Savior for their soul. And what is important for us to understand is this. All of these things in Acts chapter 1, verse 8 are strongly connected. Jesus promised to give His disciples the strength they would need to further the gospel and to grow the kingdom that promise or the fulfillment of that promise is still very much current, still relevant, and for sure it's still needed for us today. In fact, it's more needed now than ever before. Jesus promised them power. Jesus said, when the person of the Holy Spirit comes on you, and then he declares, so you can continue spreading the gospel. I strongly believe that we have missed part of this uh, extremely important element in our relationship with Jesus. Yes, we become stronger to overcome temptation and sin, etc. I understand that. But the bigger picture is telling others about Jesus as the Spirit comes upon us. So Jesus tells them to wait in verse 4 for this promise to be fulfilled. Acts 1.8, when lived out, is the expression of what the Holy Spirit is doing in our lives. It is by His Spirit that we will experience transformation in our own lives and in other people's lives as well. Now, Jesus is very specific here in this text with His instructions. You will receive power to be my witnesses. Take a moment and say that with me. You will receive power to be my witnesses. But not just power. The power is to be used for the right purpose to have its greatest impact, and that is to be a witness. Jesus specifically talks about four different places where we are to be his witnesses. And it's specific, but yet it's, it's, it covers everything. Uh, he talks about Jerusalem. Our Jerusalem is the place where we are currently living. For me, today, it's Alliston, Ontario. For you, it's where you live. That's our Jerusalem. He says, begin there. Be a witness in your home, your, your home place, your hometown, where you live. He then says, Judea. Our Judea would be other cities and towns and villages outside of the place where we currently live. He says, then be a witness in Samaria. This would be other provinces and other states. Remember, the Jews and the Samaritans had a great hate relationship, but Jesus even tells them to go there after the power of the Spirit comes upon them. You see, because it's risky does not mean we should not go. And then he ends with, we're to go to the ends of the earth. This would involve overseas missions and foreign places globally. One translation says the uttermost parts of the earth. In each place, we are to be thorough, efficient, and focused on proclaiming the gospel message to those that need to hear it. This was the heart of Christ's message to his disciples and followers. This is still the heart of Christ for us today that has not changed 
So we need to respond. We need to receive this word that Jesus is pouring into our spirit today. So let's jump into Acts chapter 2 for a few moments here. Acts 2.1 begins with this statement. Now when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. They waited as Jesus asked them to. Simple obedience was evidently displayed here. So, so here is that word Pentecost. Now when the day of Pentecost came, here's that word. The word Pentecost simply means 50th. It's basically a feast that commences 50 days after Easter or the resurrection. It's a feast, a celebration, a time of expressing joy for the blessings that God had, uh, had bestowed upon his people and for their deliverance. People from all over would come to Jerusalem to celebrate this feast. The feast of Pentecost, 50 days after Easter, uh, or the resurrection of Christ. And we know that, that Christ was upon the earth 40 days prior or before his ascension. And on his last day, he tells his disciples to wait in Jerusalem until the Holy Spirit came upon them. Therefore, we can conclude that this group of people, about 120 of them, were in that upper room waiting together, praying together for approximately 10 days for God's promise to come to pass. Let me just say this today. Prayer is still the most important thing we can be doing in these days that we are living. We pray to get power from the Holy Spirit so we can proclaim the message of Jesus. I know we pray for other things, but the, the essence of prayer, we pray to get power from the Holy Spirit so we can proclaim the message of Jesus. As the 120 prayed and they waited, the promise of Jesus comes to pass. It has not changed for us today. We pray, we wait, we receive, we proclaim. I'll say that one more time. We pray, we wait, we receive, we proclaim. So the day of Pentecost has arrived. Verse 2 and 3 describe for us this manifestation of the Holy Spirit coming upon them. And without going into too much detail for time's sake, let me just jump down to verse 4 and kind of get to the expression of what's happened here. It says, All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. I love that part where it says all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. It, is, it, it really is the heart of what Jesus promised. It has come to pass by His Spirit. Would you say that with me? By His Spirit. Now, what I would like to clarify is this today. It wasn't tongues of fire they were receiving as verse 3 describes. It was the person and the power of the Holy Spirit they were receiving. We often get very confused as to what it is we are receiving when we talk about the baptism of the Holy Spirit or the baptism in the Holy Spirit. It is not tongues that we seek, but rather the power and the person of the Holy Spirit we seek so, so we can be greater equipped to fulfill His kingdom message. I think it's what the Apostle Paul said when he said, what difference does it make if I speak in tongues if I don't have love? It's not the tongues that we seek. It's the power of the Holy Spirit, the person of the Holy Spirit we seek. See, we do not seek for our own benefit, but we seek to benefit the kingdom of God. The evidence of baptism in this context, in our context, was other tongues. Now, because it's the Feast of Pentecost, many people from all over are gathered. You almost think that God knew what He was doing, right? <laughs> Verse 5, I'm being tongue-in-cheek there. He knows what He's doing. Verse 5 alludes to this. Now, there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. I want you to catch that from every nation under heaven. There must have been a, a massive amount of people there. This outpouring of the Spirit with an evidence of speaking in other tongues has been immediately witnessed by many people representing many nations. 
This power that has been poured out on the 120 had immediate demonstration that something greater than themselves has taken place. It was evidenced by the group that were there watching. In the next several verses, there is conversation around the confusion and the the bewilderment of the many languages being spoken by these uneducated Galileans. Verse 11 says this, and I love this. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Declaring the wonder of God in multiple unlearned languages, God once again provides the means to which the gospel message can be spread by His Spirit. Other nations, Jews, converts, Gentiles, and Romans hear the wonders of God being proclaimed and many of them hearing it in their own native language by Galileans. Oh, so powerful, isn't it? Now, just to summarize, but not to take away from what has just happened here, Peter stands and begins to explain that these people are not drunk as they were being accused of, but this is a fulfillment of what the prophet Joel spoke of. Peter then preaches with Holy Spirit power and with Holy Spirit boldness to an undivided, attentive audience, and the result is 3,000 people were brought into right relationship with Christ. And I believe that we can witness this again in Canada, in North America, in our world, but it's only by His Spirit coming upon us that we will see this fulfilled. The application for us today is this. We must continue asking the Holy Spirit to fill us. Ephesians 5.18 reminds us to be continually filled with God's Holy Spirit. It says, do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. The overtone here is intentional, purposed seeking for the constant filling of the Spirit. We need it, church. If we are going to see revival in our Jerusalem, in our Judea, in our Samaria, and in our world, we have to be willing to do what the disciples and the people of Acts chapter 2 did. They committed to God's agenda. They committed to waiting in prayer. They committed by being obedient with the results. They committed by becoming ambassadors for the gospel of Jesus Christ and fulfilled the command of becoming witnesses that was challenged challenged to them in Acts chapter 1 verse 8 as the Holy Spirit came upon them. By His Spirit. Oh, it's still relevant and it's still current for today. It must be bigger than a cliche or, or some simple word. It must be lived out by Christ's disciples. It must be lived out by you and by me. And Acts 2.39 says this, I love this, the promise is for you. The promise is for me. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. The promise of the Spirit is for you and for me today to live out, to demonstrate, to be a proclamation of the gospel coming from our hearts to those that need to hear it. So let me give you a challenge for this coming week. Here's what I want us to do. And I'm not going to check. It's up to you. I want you to take some time to pray about this, what we're preaching about today. So take some time to pray. Then this week I challenge you to tell someone that Jesus loves them and desires to have a relationship with them and that you'll be praying for them. That's pretty simple. You can say that in about five seconds. Jesus loves you. Jesus desires to have a relationship with you. And I'll be praying for you. Now don't do it without praying first. But that's what I want to challenge you with. I'm challenging myself with it as well. The results we cannot guarantee. But our responsibility is not to change people. Our responsibility is to tell them about Jesus and then allow the Holy Spirit to do what He does best. 
It is by His Spirit that we can participate in the greater kingdom purpose of seeing other people come to know Jesus Christ personally, heart to heart. God, speaking to Moses way back in the Old Testament, said this, and with this I close today. In Exodus chapter 4, verse 12, it says these words, Now go, I will help you speak, and I will teach you what to say. What a powerful declaration to us today. Now go, I will help you speak, and will teach you what to say. Church, it's by His Spirit that we can do this. We can be a part of great kingdom harvest. Amen? Well, let's pray. Holy Spirit, we thank You that You've come to this earth. You've come to indwell Your people. You've come to teach, to convict, to draw us to Jesus, but also to give us power, to give us boldness, to be a witness. To be a witness that talks about the relationship we have with Jesus, the love we have for Jesus, the walk we have with Jesus. So Lord, I pray that as the challenge has gone forth, that Lord, you would help us to fulfill, help us to be obedient, to pray, and then to proclaim. To pray, to receive, to proclaim, so that, Lord, we can begin being part of Kingdom Harvest. Lord, would you remind us continually, daily, from this day forward, on this Pentecost Sunday, that it is by your Spirit that we can accomplish great things. It's by your Spirit we can see souls saved. It's by your Spirit we can see transformation of lives. It's by your Spirit that we can see people brought into right relationship with you. So God, help us to do our part. Help us to be obedient. Help us to pray. Help us to stand up like Peter did. Proclaim the gospel message to those that need to hear it in a day that's most uncertain in a day that we live, that, Lord, everything is turned upside down. Help us, Lord, to stand and proclaim the good news of the gospel message. And we thank you for this today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, God bless you, church. I trust that you will allow this challenge to sink deep into your heart, and we will see you next Sunday. God bless.